In today's video, we talk about macronutrient ratios. What's going on guys? This is Paul from ProPhysique.com and I'm coming to you inside today in my office for one simple reason because my son and my wife are outside and my son is very loud and uh, so I thought, you know what, I wanted to get this video done now so I'm going to go ahead and do it inside and of course the cat wants out. Alright, so First things first, I want to talk about the videos that I put out over the weekend. On Friday, I think it was Friday, I put a video out on perpetual dieting. Thank you for all the good feedback on that. You know, it was one of those moments where I just recorded a video because of all the uh, all the inf input that was coming in. It was kind of cathartic in the fact that I got to like express my thoughts to you guys, and um, I got a really good response. So I'm glad you enjoyed that video. Um, just about the, the process of constantly being in diet mode. And then I also want to say um, thank you to Jamie again for the amazing, amazing time that we had on Saturday. She came over, we did a video, we went to lunch, we trained, got to hang out. And um, Jamie's, you know, just one of my favorite people. And we talked about her success as a reverse diet and uh, then a diet and then a muscle building and all the things that she's been doing. And um, uh, Jamie's been awesome, so I'm glad that that video went well. She said she was really nervous, like shaking on the way to my house. So, sorry Jamie that you were nervous, but uh, you did awesome. And um, I've got such good feedback for that. I'm actually going to start talking to some of my other clients about potentially coming over and um, doing the same kind of thing, maybe just where we spend a day together training and um, talk about the, the journey and the transformation. I think it's invaluable um, when you're talking about you know, something that a lot of people struggle with, which is making change despite the fact that the change is not necessarily what they want to make. You know, and with Jamie, that was like adding calories. And, you know, I've had people come to me that say they want to compete, and then I have to talk them out of competing, um, at least for the short term, and things like that. So these kind of video topics are really invaluable. So I'm going to start um, generating some more ideas and talk to some of my clients, former and current, and just see, um, you know, what we can come up with. You know, there is going to be some limiting factors, distance, time, all these things, but uh, I think it's a great way to add value to you guys and to the channel. And I got a feedback about a video a while back when we were talking about flexible dieting. And so today's topic is going to be about that. But first things first, when it comes to, uh, I want to mention, I got some clothing in. So if you're a client of mine or, you know, you just want to support, I didn't get a ton of this stuff, but I do want to mention that um, Steven is going to be doing some shipping tomorrow on Tuesday. So if anyone wants any clothing, any of my clients, any of my friends that want any um, apparel, it's gonna be shipped out tomorrow. So go to teamprophysique.com, I'll show you some of the stuff. We got the uh, gym before him, tank tops, red and purple. And uh, you know, I've got a bunch of uh, stuff. If you just go to the Team Pro Physique, like, check out the apparel. Uh, I'm wearing the shorts right now. Whew. Love the shorts. Um, but. Anybody that's interested, Stephen is going to be shipping stuff out tomorrow. So if you get your orders in tomorrow, you get them in the next few days. So let's talk today about macro ratios. So when we're discussing the specifics of macronutrient ratios, there's a few different instances where I need some information on what is going to be correct. And that is, what are your goals and what is your body fat and where are some things at? Because I do feel there are times when macronutrient ratios are less and when they are more important. Now, when we're talking about someone who's in the improvement season, someone who is a little bit above their body fat, right? They've got a few extra pounds of body fat on them. They're focused on building, you know, they're not shredded. They're not having a problem with energy. They're more concerned with just getting calories in for, for good training and for recovery. So in an off season or in an improvement season or a gain season where you're eating a little bit more, right? Your calories are more than 15 times your body weight, 17, 18, 20 times your body weight. You'll have a little more freedom. I am referring mostly to carbs and fats. So during the improvement season, we like to set our protein goals and keep them pretty steady. Now, one thing about having a higher carbohydrate intake is that that is also protein sparing. So you don't need to constantly be increasing your protein throughout 
the improvement season. Sometimes I will raise protein just because carbohydrates and fats get so high that I like to keep the ratios kind of similar. But let's take for instance, a 130 pound female, right? And we start her in the improvement season and say she's taking in 140 to 150 grams of protein per day, which is gonna be more than a gram per pound of lean body mass, depending on, you know, desire and, and things like that and, you know, pr preference. But let's say she starts at 145 and we spend the next six months adding calories and we're able to add, say a thousand calories, mostly through fats and carbs. Well, does her protein need to go up? I typically won't bring up the protein until someone requests it. Because when we start eating more, like I said, carbohydrates are protein sparing. So your protein needs don't change a whole lot. Now, if we get up to a place where you know carbs are three or 400 a day and fats are 70, 80 or 100 a day, then maybe we start to bump up the protein because at a certain point when your calories get high enough, it becomes difficult to keep protein down because a lot of the sources when you're a flexible dieter and you're tracking all the macros from all the foods you eat, a lot of things like pasta are very high in protein. So it can be difficult to get in a lot of carbs and not have a lot of protein. So when we get to a place, let's say where calories are for, let's say this 135 pound made up female, let's say she's at 150 protein, 300 carbs and 80 fat. Now at 300 carbs and 80 fat on a daily basis, is it going to matter if she kind of accounts for the carbs and the fats to kind of be interchanged? Absolutely not. I have no problem with that. As long as a few things are discussed, that is that we're not, endangering the, the training and the recovery. Now at 300 grams of carbs a day, I fully expect this person to have plenty of glycogen for training. With fats that high, I fully expect this person to be getting all the benefits of the hormone support. So I don't see a problem even dropping as much as say 20 or 25 grams of fat, fat being nine calories per gram, and then we could basically just double it with carbs being four grams of fat per gram. So if they take 20 grams of fat, they would basically be adding like 44 grams of carbs, something, somebody can do the math for me, but it's gonna be right around that range, right? So that's something that you could exchange and vice versa. You know, if you're going out and you're gonna have a very fat dominant meal, you could possibly worry about, you know, trying to have 100 grams of fat that day and maybe bring your carbs down to accommodate. The only thing I really wanna focus on on those times is very being very specific and making sure you get enough protein. But I do like being consistent. I do, you know, if someone, someone enjoys fats more, then I will have them have a little bit more fats if someone enjoys carbs. So for those of you that are interested in like what your macro ratios when you're in the building season, I feel it's less important. But when, it, when I feel it is very important, is when you get lower in body fat. This is when it becomes essential that your macronutrient ratios become a little more in tune with what we're doing. Because as we reduce calories, again, your protein's not gonna come down much. It may even go up a little bit depending on the situation. But let's say this 135 pound female is having 145 or 150 grams of protein, but we're in a fat loss phase and she's getting very lean and now she's down to say 115 pounds, right? So protein might stay around the same, but our carbohydrates might be down to 150 or less a day. Our fat might be down to 40 or 50 or a day. That's where we don't have a lot of wiggle room with those ratios. And I really wanna focus on carbohydrates for performance. And I really wanna focus on fats for satiety, for digestion purposes and for the benefits of hormone and all the benefits that fat provide for us, right? So the lower our calories get, the more important ratios. I think there's like an inverse relationship there, guys. So hopefully that kind of clears the air. I don't feel there's an all size fits one as far as ratios. I do feel that it can vary to a great deal. Some people have digestive issues with carbohydrates. Some people digest carbohydrates like this, you know? So it's very, very variable. And that's where talking with your coach or talking with the person you're working with about your opinions matters. If you are discussing your nutrition with someone and they are like, it always has to be this way, this is the only way it can be, you might wanna consider having a good talk with them because it's not and it shouldn't always be that way. Unless you're doing like a ketogenic approach when obviously fats are gonna be very high, proteins are gonna be very moderate, carbs are gonna be very, 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 very minimal, right? That's only time that I feel like diets like that have to remain in a specific range. But when we're talking about optimizing the nutrition for you 
In the building phase, macro ratios can be rather variable, right? As long as you're getting your protein for the day. When we get to a cutting phase and we are focused on not only performance, but we're also focused on appearance and lean body mass and all the things that go into a long sustained fat loss phase, that is where I feel macronutrient ratios become very important, right? Because I want to make sure that I'm getting 15 to 20% of my fat uh, calories per day minimum from fats, right? I want to make sure I'm hitting my protein goals and then I also want to fill in that gap with carbohydrates timed at a time that will really ensure that workout and recovery are going to be good, right? We want to make sure that our performance in the gym, our energy in the gym, our recovery for the next session is all going to be set up for success. So this is when timing and ratios really play an important role. The leaner we get, the more it has the more impact on us. It has more impact on our energy and recovery. Now, when we're in a fat and happy place where we're just going to the gym, crushing it every day, it can kind of be a little less necessary to be very specific with things, but we still want to keep them in check. We still want to ensure that if we are working on metabolic building, that we are increasing our calories over time, you know, so you do want to manage your diet in that respect. Now, if you are a person who has not worried about your macronutrient ratios, um, maybe you can start to just check, just log in and plug in what you're eating and see where they're at and make sure they're in the right ranges. Um, and if you're not in a place where you're going to be metabolic building or dieting soon, and you just want to be building season and happy, I would just say focus on hitting some numbers, kind of getting an idea of what you're doing, and then just cruising like that for a while, you know, if that's mentally what's best for you. But when it comes to macronutrient ratios during the improvement season, there's some changeability with timing, not as important, but as we get leaner and leaner, those factors become a very important part of the getting lean process of being consistent, of sustaining fat loss for a long period of time, and reaching elite levels of body fat. All right, guys, this is Paul from ProPhysique.com. Have an awesome week. It is Monday. I'm excited for the week ahead. Hope you guys have a great President's Day, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.